All right, so now we're going to move to control modes. Uh, so we've got uh, a lot of different control modes that are available. Uh, it's going to vary by uh, who you're using for a, a controller manufacturer. Uh, the most common are going to be the Serial Speed Service 49 and the um, Binary and Digital Speed Control. As far as analog speed control goes, we do have two different uh, modes of analog. Um, it's going to dictate, um, or the difference between the two is going to be how the direction uh, is determined. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. Uh, and then we do have two serials, Service 49 and Service 50. Uh, they're just two different protocols, what's being used. And then we kind of have a, a hybrid between binary and serial, uh, called serial binary. All right, we'll talk about the serial speed control first. Uh, for serial, the controller is going to be in charge of the, the profile. Um, I will caveat that with um, SmartRise. Uh, it's a little bit different, is what they do actually is send over the final speed to us, and uh, it's actually up to the drive to, to ramp up to that final contract speed. Uh, or if you compare that to, say, GAL, for example, they control the whole pattern. So if you're looking to make adjustments on uh, jerk rates, XL rates, that type of thing, um, you would make them in the controller. But uh, with, with SmartRise, since we are actually generating the, the XL and D-cell ramps, you would make them internal to the drive. Uh, some adjustments, the, the baud rate, that's going to be the communication rate between the, the drive and the, the controller. Uh, reference splitting and software filter, we've got some ride quality adjustment, and then the direction selection. Um, that's going to dictate uh, what you're looking at as far as uh, hardware-wise to, to initiate a run. With, with serial speed control, I'm going to kind of break down what's, what's coming over the, the serial bus itself. I know sometimes it can kind of seem like a mystery, you know, what's, what's coming over from the controller. Um, I'm going to kind of break it up a little bit to, to explain what, what you're actually looking at or what the, what the drive is seeing. So we, we, we call the information from the controller uh, field bus data. All uh, right, that's going to contain um, process data input, PDI values. Okay, those are values that our drive is looking at from the controller. It's going to contain the control word, and then a raw speed value, a pre-torque percentage, and a target position. Okay, all of these things are coming over the serial bus from the controller. The drive is looking for these values uh, all the time. So not only are we looking for values coming from the controller, we're also sending values back out to the controller because the controller is expecting uh, certain outputs from our drive. Those are referred to as PDOs, process data outputs. Uh, ultimately, they are mapped to DG parameters in the drive. Um, the DG parameter list is going to be parameters that are going to be used for diagnostics. They are read-only. If you're using Comniviz, these are the parameters that you would scope. Uh, and they are in hexadecimal uh, format. So anytime we're dealing with um, serial, we're making some parameter adjustments here in the, in the field bus configuration, we're going to be likely a, a, um, entering in a, a hex number. Okay, so to, to kind of break down the, the process data inputs, what's coming over from the controller, what I'll have you do is, is look at the Service 49 protocol. We've got the other two protocols here, but we're just concerned about the, the Service 49 here. Now we call them uh, four 32-bit containers of information. Sometimes they're referred to as packets of information. Um, that's coming over the, the serial bus. And is what, what goes on there is we've got these, these inputs. They come over to um, FB 17 to 20, where they get their map assignment. So this is where the drive says, OK, I've got this data. It's going to go to this parameter. It's going to go to that parameter. Once it gets its assignment, it's either going to be masked or scaled. So depending upon what's coming over from the controller, it may say, OK, we don't need to do any scaling. Uh, the value that I have is, is fine. But like in the case of the, the speed uh, command that's being sent over, it's a raw value. It needs to convert that into something useful that the drive can, can interpret. So again, the, the value coming over from the controller is a, a raw value. It's unitless. Uh, the drive will do a, a bunch of math to that. It will scale it accordingly to an RPM value. And then ultimately, it ends up in um, 
at the end here on the right side uh, into parameters FBO1 to, to 4. So we went from the information from the controller, uh, ultimately gets scaled into the control word, the speed command, the pre-torque command, and the target position. So these are the default settings for the process data inputs. Again, depending upon the, the controller, they may have you change uh, something. Um, they, they are adjustable, if you wish. But um, for service 49, these are the defaults. So process data input 1, that's going to be your control word. Uh, number 2 is going to be your field bus speed. That's that raw value. Uh, FB3 is the pre-torque. So if you're using a load weigher, uh, this would be uh, sent to the controller first. It may do some math on it in the controller and then send it over as a percentage to the, the drive. And then the target position is PDI4. Uh, you can see the difference between the services 49 and 50 here. Um, if you look at the difference between uh, 49, we've got the control word as PDI1. We're in 50, we've got the speed. 3 and 4 are the same. OK, so we, we've got the data into the, fr from the controller into the drive now. Now the controller is looking for some stuff from the drive. All right, so how does that work? Well, it's going to originate in the DG parameters. So again, the DG parameters, those are diagnostic parameters. They're read only. You cannot adjust them. Uh, what's going to happen there is uh, basically the, the same process as before, but in reverse. So they will be uh, given their, their correct mapping assignment to which um, process data output they will be, be linked to, where they will ultimately go to the controller. So here are the default values for the different services for the PDOs. Uh, inverter status, so the, the, the controller is going to look at uh, what, what the inverter is doing. Uh, elevator speed, it wants to know how fast it's going, what kind of torque it's putting out, as well as motor current. All right, so we've got the control word coming over. Um, FBO1, that'll, that'll tell you the, what, what the control word um, from the controller is doing. Field bus speed, FBO2, that's that raw value. Field bus pre-torque, that's in a percentage. Adjusting, we've got two parameters that we're going to look at for uh, ride quality adjustments. That's going to be the reference splitting and then the software filter. I'll talk about those separately here. Uh, the baud rate, that's just the communication rate between the, the controller and the, the drive. Um, that needs to be set the same for both the controller and the drive. And then the direction selection inputs. Uh, it's basically going to dictate what kind of hardware directions from the controller it's looking for. OK, so the, the same picture that I was using for the, the feed forward um, torque control filter, I can uh, actually use for the, the reference splitting. So much like the, the filter, this, this step command for the, the output torque, you're going to have that same output step function uh, for the, the output speed to the motor. Now I'm referring to just from the drive to the motor side here. We're not looking at the controller. This is strictly on the, on the drive side. So this is what, from a speed perspective, what the drive is outputting to the motor. So again, we have that same step function. Now if these steps are large enough, you're going to feel it. Much like if the, that output torque command, if those steps were large enough, you'd, you'd feel that. And what the reference splitting is going to do is it's just going to average over those steps in the exact same fashion. Now, we recommend going at twice the serial update rate that you would have between the, the keypad and the, the drive. The update rate between the keypad and the drive is going to be 10 milliseconds. So that means that every 10 milliseconds, the keypad and the drive are, are communicating back and forth. Um, we recommend going twice that, so go to 20. That way, if you miss a speed command, or if the steps are, are large enough here, since we're averaging over twice that rate, you can average over and create a much, much smoother curve here. Uh, obviously, if you were to zoom in on this red portion of the curve, you would actually see this same step function, but the magnitude is going to be much, much smaller. So ultimately, you're not going to feel that. So we talked about the, the drive side going out to the motor. Now what about what the controller is sending the drive? So the controller is sending the drive this same pattern. The pattern from the controller is not perfect. It's not a perfect curve. If you zoom in, the further you zoom in, you're going to see the same step function. Again, if the steps are large enough, you will feel that in ride quality. What the software filter does is it averages over 
those same steps, um, but again, this is doing it on the incoming pattern. What we found um, in, in the field, I believe, Dan, I think I worked with you in Atlanta on, on one of these examples. What we found was values from, from 20 to, to 80 milliseconds works, works well for this. You know, we were kind of under the impression that the, the pattern from the controller is, is perfect, so it's, it's up to the drive to, to mimic that. Well, ultimately, no, it's not. I mean, if, if you zoom in uh, far enough and, and look at that, you will see the step function going on. So to, to smooth some of that out, we turned the, the software filter on. Uh, anywhere from 20 to, to 80 milliseconds works well. Anything over 80 milliseconds, uh, we introduced latency. So the, the same thing applies to that torque command filter. The same thing applies to the, the reference splitting. If you're averaging over too long of a period and you have a changing speed uh, pattern, uh, it's going to affect your, your quality in, in a negative way, whether that be overshoot, whether the, the drive can't actually you know, uh, follow the, the, the rapidly changing pattern. You kind of have an upper limit for what you can adjust that, that uh, averaging time over. Moving forward on to analog speed control. Uh, so we've got two types, uh, bipolar and uh, absolute analog. Uh, absolute analog is going to use a, a signal from, from 0 to, to 10 volts to generate the, the speed pattern. Bipolar is actually going to use a, a minus 10 to positive 10 uh, analog signal. That's going to come in on, on pins X to A, pins 1 and 2 onto the drive. Uh, for absolute analog, the direction is going to be dictated by, by an input, so you'd have to program one of the, the inputs on the drive for direction selection. Whereas for the, the bipolar analog, it's actually going to be dictated by the polarity of the, the pattern itself. So if you're getting a, a negative speed control pattern, it should be going down, positive, it'll be going up. Uh, regardless, you will still need the hardware direction to initiate a run. If you don't have a hardware direction, the run will not start. LA05 is an analog pattern gain. What that does is um, if, if this is set to, to 1, LA05, uh, it's going to correspond 10 volts to 100% uh, of your contract speed. So in this case, if you're running at, say, 100 feet per minute, 10 volts is going to correspond to 100 feet per minute. But what if, for some reason, your, your pattern from the controller, uh, whether it be slightly off or for some reason it's only sending you 5 volts, you want 5 volts to correspond to 100 feet per minute. How do, you, how, do you, how do you do that? If you adjust LA05, uh, increase it to a value of 2 in this situation, that would shift this curve uh, over to the left so that 5 volts would correspond to 100% of your speed instead. So that is one, one adjustment that you can make. Binary speed control. Uh, so this is going to be uh, dictated by the, the inputs on uh, terminal strip X to A. Uh, the correct set of inputs are going to have to be signaled in order for a speed to be selected. Um, it's going to use three inputs, and we're going to have seven different speeds available. And it's going to be dictated by the binary tables that are in our manual. Uh, we've got several different tables, uh, depending upon who's, who the controller manufacturer is, which binary table they wish to uh, use. Um, it's going to be a, a different set of inputs for speed selection. In binary speed control, the um, drive is going to be responsible for the, the speed pattern. So XL rates, decel rates, jerk rates, those will all be adjusted internal to the drive. The drive is making that, that speed pattern. Uh, so here's where you would select which binary table uh, you're looking at. It's going to be right here in um, binary speed selection. You can see we've got uh, several different, different options, level, correction, inspection versus inspection level correction. What that corresponds to is, is these tables here. Um, this is going to, to give you a set of inputs on what's active, depending upon which set of, of inputs you have signaled. So for example, if you want to signal a high speed run, you would need I4 to be active. If you want to signal an inspection run, you need I2 and I3 to be signaled. And this, just two more tables, just to, to highlight the difference. In this case, high speed, I4. In this one, high speed is signaled by 2 and 3. So again, that's why we need to know which 
uh, binary table we're looking at, because depending upon the set of inputs that you are activating, uh, you may be actually activating the correct inputs, but you're using the wrong binary table, so you're not going the correct speed. Diagnostic screen number four is going to be your friend here. That'll be able to tell you what's active, what's not. Here are the parameters that you would look at as far as uh, adjusting XL, D-cell, jerk rates. Terminology is going to be key here. Depending upon what type of run you're trying to uh, adjust, you're going to have different uh, adjustable parameters. What I mean by that is an inspection run is going to be a different parameter to adjust the acceleration compared to a one floor run. So if you've got a one floor run and you're not accelerating fast enough and you start adjusting LS50, it's not going to have any impact. You need to adjust LS30. And again, that, that applies for, we got a one floor run, we've got emergency runs, intermediate speeds. They're different parameters. So it, it's crucial to know what type of run you're running and then where in the profile you're trying to make that, that adjustment. All right, digital speed control. So this is what uh, we were using up here on the, on the demo units. Now digital speed control is going to use four sets of inputs, but it's only going to have five speeds. Now you might be asking, I'm using one more input, shouldn't I have more speeds compared to binary? Um, that's going to be due to this guy here. So in digital speed selection, uh, depending upon what type of inputs you're signaling, some of them have no effect whether they're active or not. So in this case, a high speed run, as long as I3 is active, it doesn't matter what I4 is doing, it's going to run high speed. So that's why we actually were using one more input, but actually we have less available speeds uh, that, that you can signal. Uh, it's going to be very similar to the, the binary speed control. We've got different logic tables. Uh, every controller manufacturer has their own preference. So it's just a matter of, of selecting the correct uh, table. And the same thing applies for uh, jerk rates as well here. Again, making sure we know the terminology, what type of run you're trying to um, adjust. Does anybody have any questions on control modes? Serial speed control, digital, binary? Clear? Okay.